Okay, she's brushing her hair. Is she rolling? Mm -hmm. Oh, wow. Hey, tennis fans. Um, nope. Who says hey, tennis fans? Hey, tennis fans. Oh, she's rolling. Hi, everyone. Welcome to Serving Up the Tea. My name is Lars Melly. I'm here to teach you how to make cocktails inspired by your favorite tennis players because I don't know about you, but when I'm watching my faves, my anxiety's off the charts and she needs a drink. That's what inspired this. Actually, what actually inspired this was the Serena Azarenka match from about two months ago. Cue video of me pacing. And so I obviously don't have a drink in my hand and definitely need one. So um, here we are. The first episode of Serving Up the Tea is inspired by my favorite tennis player, Serena Williams, AKA The Goat. This cocktail is titled The Goat, but there's a silent A in it. So it's G-A-O-A-T. And if you're adverse to silent letters, it's GOAT. Let me tell you what inspired this cocktail and then we'll go down the line. When I think about conceptualizing a cocktail, I think about two different things. I wanna think about how it looks, and then probably a little more importantly, how it tastes. So as you can see, this cocktail has an amazing green color to it. It has a cute little tennis ball, melon ball, adorable. The green was inspired by two things. The first of which is the fact that it reminds me of grass, and she has seven Wimbledon titles. Obviously, she's queen of Wimbledon, for current active players, don't come at me about Martina. I know Martina has nine, thank you. So of course, thinking about the grass, I wanted a green color reflecting that. She also has a lot of Libra energy going on. And Libra, according to my first astrologer who taught me, uh, is represented by the color green, or the color green represents Libra. I don't know how that sentence should go. I thought, you know, we should have a green cocktail inspired by her Libra energy and her grass court prowess. When I was thinking about the taste, it needs to be a bold flavor. It needs to really um, take you on a journey. It needs to be a pioneer in its field. It needs to be the goat of taste. Am I right? But goat. <laughs> That's what inspired this drink. What you're gonna need for this drink is the following. I always work with one spirit, one liqueur, and then a sweet and a sour. It's the daisy template. That's how I was taught by my mixology teacher. I know, hoity doity. I have a pineapple infu infused vodka. I went with Stoli, but they're not giving me any money for this. So go with whatever pineapple infused vodka you want. I like pineapple infused vodkas over like pineapple tasting vodkas because there's actual juice in here. If you, you know, don't have access to that and you just have like a vodka bottle and like pineapple juice in your house, make your own, I won't tell. And then I have Midori, but there's definitely generic versions of Midori and that's a Melanie Cure. Uh, Midori is more so for the color than for the taste of it, but it complements very well with the pineapple vodka. Tropical. Um, and then I have Triple Sec, which is essentially sugar. I used to do shots of it in college, fun fact didn't do much for me. And then I have organic lime juice. If you don't wanna squeeze your own limes, because that's filthy, um, get organic lime juice. This one says it's just lime juice. Sometimes it says they have like maldextrin or like whey protein. I'm just kidding, not whey protein, but like they have other shit in it. And you don't want that. You just want lime juice. So the first thing we're gonna need to do is make sure that we have ice already in one of our mix cups. So the ratio for this is going to be, we're gonna do two of the spirit, which is pineapple infused vodka, one of the liqueur, and then three fourths of triple sec, which is the sweet, and then one half of the sour, because this is pure lime juice, and that can be a little overpowering, unless you like it sour and then do equal parts of each. I'm not judging. Everyone has their own palates. I did a 23 and me once. Let's go in order of least worthy to most worthy. And so triple sec is the least worthy here. It's kind of garbage, but I use it in most of my cocktails because it's a good time. Um, and so we're gonna need three fourths of this. Take your measure. You should have a double sided measure. Um, if you don't, you can guesstimate. Um, sure, eyeball it. Um, so this measure, this is two, this is one. And so I need three fourths. Be pretty careful and, you know, just put it on you, just like that. And then I'm gonna put the lime juice in and you should use one half for lime juice. I like myself a little bit sweeter. I know some people like it a little less sweet. Glug, glug, glug. Um, there's barely any glugging. Then we're gonna need 
uh, one and a half of Midori, and I didn't open this beforehand, so let's see how quickly this takes me. Cue timer. One sec. Wow. Yeah. So talk amongst yourselves. What's your favorite? I'm just kidding. While I'm opening this, let's talk about my favorite shot Serena hit. If I were to narrow it down to two shots, my two favorite Serena shots, one of which is obviously her serve. One time when she was in the Wimbledon final, I think it was 2012 against uh, uh, Agnieszka Redzwanska, she literally won a game just through aces. Chrissy Everett loves to talk about how she revolutionized the women's game with the best serve ever. I agree. You can't read her ball toss at all. She keeps a real good poker face with that ball toss and can hit anywhere into the box. It's pretty incredible. And then outside of that, I love when she hits a passing winner by hit, uh, running into a split. Q split. We'll show that. And look, he did it. Okay, so you're gonna need one and a half of the Midori, and this is what's gonna give it its really cool color. It's pretty delicious too, but I actually cared more about the color since I wanted that green, the Libra queen that she is. Lastly, we need two full of the pineapple vodka. Awesome, boom. <laughs> Someone once asked me, a wise person once asked me, what's your favorite Serena match if you're gonna do this? And there's too many to count, am I right? But I would say, before I shake this, my favorite was uh, Wimbledon also, when she almost lost to Heather Watson in the third round of uh, the 2015 Wimbledon Championships and came back from nowhere and showed us why she is the goat. Here we go, shake it all around. Then you like karate chop it, usually it's like, Closes in tight, so then keep it in the big one, not the little one, because you're gonna need to strain it. Make sure you have a strainer. If you don't, a pasta strainer, you know? Be industrious, be creative about it. Don't knock your ice over. And pour it on out. I love the color of it. Right, great. Next, you always need a garnish. So, give me a moment. I have a melon in front of me. I like honeydew, I feel like it's gonna look most like a tennis ball. Cantaloupe works great. Anything that you can melon ball, essentially, if you want this garnish. I just was always taught you should have a garnish, and I think it's cute, and I'm a homosexual. Um, cut. <laughs> You're gonna have to melon ball, which means you stick the melon baller in, get in deep, and then squeeze it, and turn around. Boom, just like that. Gorgeous. Chuck your melon somewhere. Is it out of frame? <laughs> Great. And then, fuck, I lost my, um, lost my stick. Oh, fuck, it's in the melon? No. no. Oh, fuck. here we go. There it is. So then you're gonna put that in there. And look, it's the goat, or the gout, whatever you want to call it. Bon appetit. I'm a genius. They want to make a tennis joke about how this video was tougher to make than um, drawing Monica Nicolescu in the first round of a Masters tournament, which is a very niche joke. It's a niche joke, but I can do 